All right, well, hello everyone. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for another session as part of our 2021 Virtual Outdoor Expo hosted this week by the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. Uh, of course, you can find a schedule of our remaining events through tomorrow by scrolling down the feed here on the Facebook page. My name is Mike Parker, Communications Director for the agency. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We're bringing a great opportunity right now to talk about the real emerging sports that's going on in the world of angling, and that is kayak fishing. And we'll be talking about kayak fishing in general, but specifically we brought in some experts who are very familiar with kayak fishing Pennsylvania's rivers and the larger bodies of waters. So I um, welcome this afternoon the Fish and Boat Commission's Northwest Region Education Specialist and Kayak Angler Chad Fisher, as well as uh, Round Tournament Kayak Angler. Guys, thank you both for being here. Thank you for having me. You got Thanks for having us. You bet. A reminder to everybody as you're watching a stream on Fifth this afternoon, your questions and your comments are welcome. That's the point of this. We're going to try to get to as many relevant questions as we can as we talk with our experts over the next few minutes. Remember, of course, if you're looking for specific questions about fishing and boating, you can find lots of frequently asked questions and answers by visiting our website, fishandboat.com. All right, so to kick things off, why don't we go ahead and just sort of chat with our guests, get to know who you guys are. Chad, we'll talk about you first. Why don't you just give us a quick brief of the, you know, who you are and, and your role with the Fish and Boat Commission. Thanks, Mike. Uh, like Mike said, my name is Chad Foster. I'm the Western Regional Education Outreach Coordinator. I cover 23 counties in the western third of the state. Um, have a staff in the southwest, Mandy Smith, that we do education outreach programs for the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. I started kayak fishing in 2013 um, and then started tournaments pretty much shortly thereafter and have been hooked ever since. So it's a huge passion of mine, met a lot of good friends and a lot of good people fishing these waters and uh, yeah, just excited to be here. And Chad, where are you streaming live from here today? I'm from my house, working from home. What, what, what part of, the, of Pennsylvania are you in? Uh, in Mercer County, Northwest region. Excellent. All right. You mentioned friends that you met along the way in this activity, and one of those guys is Russell Johnson, who's a, a kayak angler who participates in tournaments. Russell, tell us where you're joining us from today and a little bit about your background as it relates to kayak fishing. Well, currently I am in downtown Pittsburgh. I'm from uh, the southwestern Pennsylvania area. I grew up on the Yakagani River, uh, which flows from Maryland into the Monongahela River. I grew up on the banks of that river, um, left and went to the military, stayed away, ended up coming back. Um, but my love for fishing has been ever since I was a little kid in a canoe and kayak. Um, then I found kayak fishing tournaments would have taken me basically um, everywhere from Panama um, to Wisconsin to Maine, um, deep sea, shallow, Lake Erie, everywhere. Um, I pretty much specialize in tournament fishing um, but also that that grasp of kayak fishing has brought me closer with my family I take my seven-year-old out with me and she's been out since she's been six months old um, so as I am a uh, tournament angler I'm also family oriented uh, when it comes to kayak fishing just how much does Russell love kayak fishing he's taking time out from his day job to join us here so we appreciate you finding some good reception there in downtown Pittsburgh. And um, as you join us from the, the front seat of your vehicle, it's, it's much appreciated. We're going to try to make the most of our time that we have with you and use your expertise to uh, the fullest. So our producer today is joining us from the southeastern corner of the state. Andy Desco is in the Philadelphia area. And Andy has some of the behind the scenes uh, button pushing responsibilities today, including bringing up some video. I thought we'd kick things off with some pictures and video of you two in action so we can give people an idea of some of the beauty around you as you're out there kayak fishing Pennsylvania's rivers and beyond. So as we queue up that those pictures and videos, what I'm going to ask you to do is uh, just sort of take a look at, at what we're looking at here on your screen. And uh, Chad, since we're beginning, uh, obviously that's you. <laughs> we can, we, if you want to start off, but just by sort of telling us, uh, you know, what we're looking at here and a, and a story behind this photo. And Andy, keep in mind if uh, if Chad wants to talk uh, for a couple of 
you know, you can go ahead and pause that video to make things a little smoother so they stay up on the screen for us. So Chad, what, what are we doing here as it looks like you're um, fishing uh, along some sort of moving body of water? Yeah, so that was uh, in the spring of 2018. I was fishing for smallmouth as they enter Elk Creek out of Lake Erie. It's one of my favorite places and times to go. Um, you can access that creek and down by the mouth and work your way up there. Normally I was targeting smallmouth and I usually find all the other kind of fish when I'm fishing for a particular species. So today or that day, it was a, a nice brown trout that must have been in the river or in the creek from, you know, the spring run and, and just on its way back out. Well, it saw my uh, chatterbait and, and wanted to eat. So got it in and took a picture and let it go. All right. Beautiful fish, by the way. All right. What do we got here? Yeah, it's a buddy of mine, Sean Perkins. Uh, we're floating the Allegheny River just outside of Franklin, and uh, he caught his first muskie uh, around some bridge pylons, and uh, it was just a good time with friends on the river. We do this a lot in the summer, just um, whether it's a weekend, weekday, anything like that. If we have a good water quality or, or clarity and it's a good time to go fishing we're usually we're on the creeks fishing i think we're going to talk a little bit about how elaborate some of these kayak fishing setups can get and just looking at that picture right there it's i'm seeing dollar signs but you can tell me about that a little bit later <laughs> russell looks like this is a a short video clip of you Yes, yeah, so that's on the Yakagani River Reservoir, which is uh, near Confluence, Pennsylvania. Um, that's one of our winter trips. Um, safety gear wise there, I do have on a dry suit, my life jacket. Um, inside the hall, I'm carrying a full change of clothes. Um, I do have somebody with me. I'm not by myself, um, but we went out targeting uh, winter. I think this is de late December, maybe right before Christmas, two years ago. Um, up there chasing smallmouth um it, it's a fun time and there's nobody else out on the water but of course safety is key yeah you got snow on the ground and uh you remember how big that bass was that smallmouth there was uh what i would say was the cookie cutter 15 16 inches uh we didn't find anything really really big there um we're also using our electric motors uh that we have on the back with a lithium battery uh, made by a company called Torquedo. Um, there's just a fun outing uh, with another one of my friends named Jeff Little. All right, as we continue to go through some videos here, looks like a shot of that motor. We can talk a little bit more about equipment here as we go. And again, though, I mean, most people don't ever get to see the, the Yakagani River from the middle of the river <laughs> at, <laughs> at river level in the middle of December. So. I guess kayak no. fishing can actually can get you places. All right, so we're holding up that fish again here. I think we'll get to the next photo here in just a second. All right, Chad, this one's for you. Yep, that's uh, one of my rigs from last year. I still have it. Um, it's a Hobie Pro Angler 12. That's uh, more of my creek and river style. It has a drive in it, a pedal drive that is able to go 360 degrees so it has a lot of advancements in that i've got a fish finder on it um torpedo motor on the back since it's a motorized kayak it has to have registration and that's part of the decals up front it's a motorized um craft so just have a lot of gear on there there's there's i mean kayaks are just like any other sport the more time and effort and thought you put into it. Um, you can put a lot of stuff on these boats, rig them out the way you want them and uh, enjoy your time on the water. That was early last year, um, fishing Presque Isle Bay in Erie, looking for smallmouth. So just, uh, the um basically you can stand in these kayaks these days you can target um smallmouth you can look for certain areas where you want to target them 
always wearing my life jacket. Um, safety is important. I have a dry bottoms on there as well. I think that was early April time frame. Um, so those smallmouth move into the bay from Lake Erie and uh, a lot of guys, a lot of anglers like to, to target them up there. And that was uh, my personal best smallmouth or largemouth last year. It was caught on a local lake that's uh, 10 minutes from me called Lake Wilhelm. It's a pretty well-known fishery. And that's just showing you a catch photo release style um, tournament identifier. So that was caught in a month long tournament and submitted to an online um, through Tourney X is what the app is called. And those keep a uh, collection of your best five fish for the month. And that's how those online catch photo release tournaments are, are run. So it's just showing the size of some of our fish that we get here in PA. Um, just an amazing fishery and just an awesome time of the year to, to catch these fish. All right, let's keep these going. And we'll try to just keep this video rolling. If you guys want to just give us a quick 15 second or so description of what we got. Here you go, Russell. I'll give you I'll give you a little bit of time on this one because that's <laughs> that's a beautiful fish and looks like a nice spot. Yeah, so that's uh, probably my absolute favorite place to fish in Pennsylvania. That's on the Susquehanna River. Uh, in that, we were coming into fall, um, float with some friends. Uh, my style of fishing is rather aggressive. I use big baits or topwater, and that was a hungry fish uh, ready to eat on the, the Susquehanna River. Um, the, I've taken, uh, you know, plenty of times from my area down here, just southwest of, of Pittsburgh, to travel three hours out to Harrisburg. Because um, Pennsylvania has some blue, beautiful waterways. Um, this waterway is always capturing my attention simply because of its size and it's also lack of access to bigger boats. Um, it's mainly canoers and kayakers, uh, but it's utterly beautiful. It's wide and it's shallow. Where do you normally put in? Where's a good place for, for a kayak angler to, to put in? Which, which access points? So, um, something really cool happening with Pennsylvania right now uh, we're developing a lot of water trails so pretty much any body of water the running body of water we can say the Juniata River the Yakagani River the Mon the Allegheny um, they have water trails that are now being designated that list public launches for put in and take outs and it also uh, distinguishes the distance whether it's seven miles five miles 15 miles um, a lot of those maps are also putting up uh, public camping spots. So it's in a very affordable way to have some fun with a family on a weekend, but it also lets you know um, what you can do with a friend over the course of the day, taking two vehicles and going out fishing. So in the Harrisburg area there on the Susquehanna, something like a Fort Hunter? In yeah, Harrisburg? Fort, Fort Hunter's amazing. Um, I like Sellins Grove. Um, I fish mainly north of Harrisburg. Um, Dolphin Straits are one of my favorite areas to fish, along with the Manitango area. Got it. Great. All right. What are we looking at here? An access area. Looks like maybe the start of a day. Yeah, that day. was that was last this past fall. That was a tournament from kayak anglers. It was uh, the River's Edge tournament that was based out of Pittsburgh, you could fish any moving water within 50 miles of the shop. So this particular morning, this was a uh, tournament morning and this was the Franklin access. So that was the northernmost point you could go. And uh, I think there was about 10 of us that put in there and launched. So we float down through to Fisherman's Cove launch and that's about 11 miles, give or take on the river, which can be done in an eight hour tournament setting. So that's how we chose to do it. Have vehicles at both ends and you complete your day and, and go back from there. This was another one of those fun species that you catch when you're targeting smallmouth on Erie. Uh, the channel cats are big up there in the spring. They hit, they feel like a stump, and then all of a sudden they realize they're hooked and enjoy. And they'll move the kayak 
for several feet. Um, and it's a blast to try to get in the net and into your kayak. So they don't have teeth, so you don't have to worry about that, like muskies and some of the other species out there. But um, they're just a blast to catch and just a lot of fun. And channel cats will hit lures occasionally, isn't that right? Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like a group shot. Yeah, that was uh, one of our events out, just a fun outing. Um, we usually go out to the Susquehanna every fall. Russ is involved. There's several of our friends that we usually get a cabin and just have a good weekend of catching smallmouth on the Susquehanna. That's uh, actually Montango area, just like Russ said. That's that's me again on the uh, that's a Jackson kayak. That's a Kusa HD. Uh, that kayak's made for moving water. Um, we're still out winter fishing there, uh, but as you can see, I have a few things on that kayak. Um, I have my paddle. I have a spare paddle. Um, we have a landing net. Um, if you look at my hands, I'm wearing neoprene gloves. Um, you can see my full dry suit at that point um, with the orange sleeves, gray bottoms. That's in case uh, if I happen to tip my kayak and become immersed in water, uh, safety aspect is there. Uh, once again, in the hall on the very far right side of that picture, there's a, a black top um, that allows access inside the kayak. Um, inside there, I have a dry bag. I also have equipment to start a fire um, just so safety, safety is there. Once again, somebody else is taking that picture, so we're out in pairs. Um, also noted on my life jacket as far as a safety thing, there's a pair of stainless steel scissors right in the center. Um, that's in case I would become entangled with a fishing line or anything else along that lines to help me get away from my kayak or anything that I'm entangled with. Um, those scissors cut through paracord, electrical, electrical lines, fishing line or anything like that that will help me uh, be safe on the water because uh, we all owe it to come home to our families. And that bass got a uh, a quick release there and back in the water for somebody else to catch again. Yeah. Thumbs um, up. Noted, <laughs> noted on, on that with the electric motor, um, some of these motors that our guys are putting on, um, we are you know capable of running 13, 14 miles uh, with a lithium battery and also at speeds of you know five to six miles per hour. All right, guys. Well, I think we're coming to the end of our of our video and pictures there, but I wanted to give everybody an opportunity to see why we brought you two in, um, just to see you in action, understand that you guys have a you know have have years of experience under your belt and you're familiar with a lot of this, especially modern kayak fishing equipment. So as we as we move through those and uh, and you guys have touched on a, on a few things, I think the next best thing for us to do is to just sort of talk about some of the frequently asked questions. You know, if you were at a, uh, you know, Chad, if you were at a, an outdoor show booth over the winter this this year and, and those shows were actually happening, unfortunately, many of them have been canceled. I'm sure, a lot of people would bend your ear about kayak fishing. So let me run through a few questions for both of you as we get into some questions sending into us via Facebook Live as we stream here this afternoon, too. So, uh, Russell here, I guess when when did you really notice that kayak fishing was starting to take off beyond just the hardcore group that may have uh, been doing it for a while now? So, um, like I said, I grew up fishing small vessels, uh, never out of a power boat. Um, when I came back from the military, 2006, 2007, I noticed the influence of people moving to smaller craft to fish smaller water. Um, the lore of kayak fishing caught me because I don't want to be around a whole bunch of people. Um, I like finding my own little niche spot and having fun and being able to go by myself. If I have a boat, I have 11 friends that wanna go, nobody wants to pay for gas or anything else like that. Well, I currently have four or five kayaks that anybody can go, but they are gonna pick up a paddle and they're gonna quote unquote pay their own way. Um, but I noticed the, the surge of kayak fishing probably in the 2015, 2016 era um, where it became really affordable. Um, now me and Chad both use kayaks that are decked out uh we have pretty much every amenity you can put on them 
Um, and we grew to that point. We both started with a uh, lot smaller kayaks coming from your small uh, mom and pa shops that you can go and get started in, in this sport relatively cheap um, to where we're at now using um, what are considered some of the top of the line um, products. You know, Chad's running a Hobie uh, this year, and I'm in a Jackson kayak, which is an American made kayak down in Tennessee. Um, both of those kayaks are, are relatively expensive, um, but they fit our needs because we go out on the water for 12 to 14 hours a day from sunup to sundown sometimes. And it's like sitting in a lawn chair all day, um, where other people only want to go out for a couple hours. So the big box stores as uh, you know, you would have, have better options for the people that don't use them as much as we do. Chad, let's talk about uh, a little bit more about equipment. So. You touched on being decked out and having, you know, every little uh, gizmo that you can find to, to attach to your kayak. But what basic type of equipment would I need if I wanted to get into the sport of kayak fishing? If I was preparing now for spring and if I had a, a reasonable budget? Yeah, Mike, um, obviously you need a kayak and kayaks can range from a couple hundred dollars to a couple grand to, you know, five grand or so so there's a lot of flexibility in that range but if somebody just has a recreational sit inside kayak at home that they usually go down the rivers in the summer with um, all it really takes is a couple tracks that they can drill holes in their kayaks um, put you know the screws in on those tracks and basically set up rod holders set up cup holders um, put bungees behind them and carry their rod bag or their their equipment bag and put the rods in front of them and go out on the water with stuff they already have so um kayak fishing can be done for a couple you know relatively inexpensive like russ said but you can also make it your passion and and put a lot of time money and effort into this sport so um the fish really doesn't know what is above them as far as what you've got. So at the end of the day, that fish is just worried about whether he's hitting your lure or not. So that's that's kind of the fun part of, of kayak fishing too. Um, there's different brands out there, uh, different lengths. So a lot of it is just getting to your local kayak shop. Um, it's been a bo booming business since last year. Um, it's hard to find some of these kayaks in stock, but get to your local kayak shops and, and hit them up. Um, they usually have some type of uh, a trial maybe, or get a hold with some of the guys in some of these kayak fishing clubs and go out with them, spend a day on the water. Most of us will have an extra kayak or two and you can come out with us and, and just enjoy your time on the water and see if that's something that you're interested in. Russell. If you were to, if someone were to have a kayak already, maybe something that they, they've had for a few years, whether it's an inexpensive sit-in or sit-on, uh, and they go online and they buy a couple of rod holders and a couple of you know, tracks or some bungees, like the, the type of basic equipment that you would want to, to, to hold some fishing rods and some gear for fishing purposes, would you recommend... Um, that people install that kind of stuff themselves is it is it easy or can you get yourself into trouble if you're not too handy and can you make some expensive mistakes so i guess the alter the the altern the alternative would be to have someone do it for you so i guess is it a do-it-yourself thing or if i want to gear up my kayak should i have somebody do it who might be a little bit more of an expert um so as that's a funny question because i'm a guy that will draw a one-inch hole in my kayak um, but I also have been doing this for multiple years. Um, I've helped Chad put certain things on his kayak where the experience does help. Um, and in that, um, this is probably one of the fastest growing sectors of a sport that there is, um, where our technology, YouTube, um, Facebook, and all these other avenues for finding information are out there. Now, with that being said, there is good information, there is bad information. Um, but if you're ready to get into that sport, um, there's basically groups on every corner of our state, central, northeast, the Laurel Highlands, that these people will bend over backwards to bring you into what we find comfort with. Um, so for a lot of people, we say tournament fishing, but a lot of times it's just going out with friends, doing a like-minded thing. 
Um, so, you know, when you have all that stuff, if you're not comfortable, I, I'll be the first person to say, reach out to me. If I can help you, I'll be more than glad to help you. Um, if you're not in my area, I know people all through the state now that will give you a hand or point you in the right direction. So I wouldn't just necessarily go pull a me and drill a one inch hole in your kayak. Um, I would work up to that. Um, but they're kayaks, they're, they're not a $80,000 bass boat um, where you're drilling through fiberglass. It's plastic, it can be welded back together um, per se. So that's, that's definitely a personal dis discretion if you wanna drill into your kayak. I still drill into chads every once in a while. So um, we have to, it's just up to you. Uh, for me, I'll I'll cut it in half and, and figure it out. <laughs> yeah, you just don't want to drill through the other side. I yeah, guess. no drilling through the other side. <laughs> All right, Chad, uh, here's a good question. I mean, it's kind of simple, and, and I actually kind of find this amusing, but why put all this time into a kayak? I, I, Russell answered a little bit of this earlier, but why put all this time into a kayak when you could probably afford a boat, a regular <laughs> boat? Yeah, that's a, you know, that's a question we get a lot, especially with some of our setups that you see out there. If you come to a, a tournament or anywhere where we're having a tournament and you'll see all kind of setups and kayaks out on the water. So, like I said, a couple hundred dollars to, you know, 10 grand worth of a setup. Um, I could have a, a small bass boat for for probably the, the cost of some of these, but um, some of those other boats have a hard time getting into where we can get into. And um, I like to fish around structure. Lake Wilhelm in the north end is loaded with stumps. And that's one place where those bass boats won't go. But Russ and I can get in there. We can target those stumps. And usually there's a you know good bass behind or underneath them. And it's just a, a fun part of the whole experience is just getting out on the water and getting to those places where some of the other boats can't get to plus it's a cost thing we don't have to put gas in our vehicles as often if we're trailering a boat compared to a kayak some of us have kayak trailers but they don't weigh as much as a boat would so you're not going to have as much fuel and you know you name it there's several other reasons if russ wants to explain any more go ahead um, I, I look at it from an aspect like this uh, for me i can load up in my kayak i'm sitting in my truck now I can put all my gear here in a kayak. I can travel across the state. Um, I don't have to worry about the boat. I don't have to worry about a trailer. I don't have to worry about gas. I don't have to worry about oil. Um, I just have to worry about my vehicle. But with that, I can pick small bodies of water where in Pennsylvania we have electric only lakes, um, where the gas boat that I would have to run on, say, Lake uh, Pomatuming or uh, any of the other big lakes that you would think, I can't take to these bodies of water that I regularly visit, but I can take my kayak to those bodies of water that I would visit with a big boat. Um, for me, I mean, I target fish, you know, I go walleye fishing on Lake Erie, which at times I'm two and a half to three miles away from the shore in a kayak. And granted, I get looked at crazy, but I also have a full stringer of fish and I'm going home at a time that these guys are still trying to find fish. Um, it's a stealth thing. It's a quiet thing and it's an independence thing. A couple of questions that we're getting as we stream on Facebook Live, not necessarily in order here, but uh, Chad, I'll ask you this one. Touch on regulations, safety requirements for this type of boating experience, which would be kayak fishing. So in general, Kayak fishing, as as opposed to just general paddling, I don't know if there's any different regulations, but what do people need to know as as far as uh, regulations? Maybe you want to talk about cold water, life jacket requirements, um, registrations, launch permits, uh, and, and also maybe touching on on the point of uh, just where where things stand with uh, even even alcohol use while while paddling. Yeah, I can touch on that, Mike. So basically during the cold weather wear months, and that's from November 1st through April 30th, if you're in a kayak, you have to wear your life jacket at all times. Um, most of the friends that I've got that's in this sport and anybody that's in a kayak tournament series, anytime you're on the water, the life jacket has to be worn. But if you're out there on a nice summer day floating along, you just have to have the kayak or you just have to have a PFD in your 
you know, on your kayak somewhere so you can reach it in time. Um, you have to have a whistle. Um, if you want to use a Fish and Boat Commission or a DCNR state-owned access area, you have to have a launch permit or a registration. And if you have a motor on your kayak, you have to have a motorized registration. And that's done through Harrisburg. That's done through the Fish and Boat Commission. The easiest thing to do is make sure you get your manufacturer's statement of origin and your bill of sale. And basically, you could take it to a notary if you want. They can do those forms for you and they send it into Harrisburg. They'll give you a temporary and then you can use it that day. Um, just the best way to do about that. There's a lot of people putting motors on these kayaks these days. I get probably questions a couple times a week from friends that are adding motors to their kayaks and they want to know how to do it and what route to take and things like that so that's probably the easiest thing to do um as far as nighttime use you need a all around 360 white light if you have a motor you would need the red and green at the bow so all of those things can be found on our website at fishandboat.com under the boating handbook. Um, it's a big, huge, uh, a lot of good information there. So it's a great place to go and um, most of your questions should be answered there. Do you have anything to add to Russ? Um, no, I just say uh, the, the websites are your number one source of the information. Um, basically, if you're gonna put a, any kind of propulsion on it, you're going to fall under the category of a boat. Um, some things that like stick out to me, like when we talk about registration, most of our kayaks are under the length. It requires you to have a title so you can just do a registration. So it's not a big, crazy cost. Um, I think for your launch permit for two years is 20 bucks plus the, the fee for doing it online. Um, and then if you go to uh, do a powered registration, uh, you can do it multiple years there also. Um, and it, it's very nominal. Um, the cool thing about having them registered um, is now your hull identification number, because each one of these kayaks are registered, like you would think of a vehicle identification number, like a VIN number on your car. Each kayak has its own special number. Uh, so if something were to happen, um, they can track that number down and track it back to the, the owner. Or if the boat came up missing or something were to happen, to me, if I was out on Lake Erie and got away from my boat, they would know who was most likely on that boat. Got it. And I'll just mention, because uh, on the topic of paddling, not to associate, uh, you know, kayak fishing with alcohol use or anything like that, but in general, for people who are considering getting into kayaking and paddling, they should be aware that the blood alcohol limit is the same as if you were on a powered boat. Always like to mention that as, as a safety, um, uh, just as a, to make them aware. Uh, 0 0.08 blood alcohol is uh, considered impaired in Pennsylvania, whether you're on a powered boat with the biggest motor you can find or an unpowered kayak floating down the river. So we'll move on to another question here. Uh, someone wanted to know basically where can we find out where kayak fishing tournaments are happening? Chad or me? I'll, I'll start and then uh, you can add a few if you want, Russell. So. Uh, Kayak-Anglers or kayakanglers.com is a good place to go. There's four different chapters in the state of Pennsylvania. There's a chapter in Eastern, in Central, in Laurel Highlands, and then in Western PA. So that pretty much covers pretty much the whole length of the state. Um, there's a nominal fee. It's like $40 to become a member. And then you can fish any of those tournaments um, for a members only rate. So it's all run through Tourney X this year. And um, all of them have five different Angler of the Year schedules. Um, so we crown it, or they crown an Angler of the Year uh, um, winner at the end of each year. And then there's a championship, usually on the Susquehanna in October. So it's very similar to, you know, the Bass Masters or, or any of those professional tournament series, only this is more your homegrown or grassroots. Um, most of kayak anglers, they'll give 25% of their entry fees back to a charity at every event. So um, a lot of this is a brotherhood and there's a lot of community in, in the sport of kayak fishing and it's just a, a great time to be on the water. So I'll let Russ talk about the two other national trails since he's the one that has been fishing most of those and has a better idea on that. 
Um, yeah, so there's two other national trails, and those will take you outside of the state, um, but also have some some local stuff in the state. There's actually three of them. Um, bass is most bass anglers would know, like Bass Masters. They run a kayak series now. There is a Pennsylvania chapter. Um, you can find that online. Uh, bass Pennsylvania Kayaking. There's another organization called Kayak Bass Fishing, which is abbreviated by KBF. Um, if you go to kayakbassfishing.com, they hold roughly 20 to 30 tournaments. Um, the one thing about that is um, they also hold monthly tournaments. Um, and those are just for your weekend warriors that don't want to get fully involved in a national scale uh, tournament scene. And then there's another series that came on uh, two years ago now called the Hobie Bass Opens. Um, it's sponsored by one of the bigger kayak uh, manufacturers, um, but it's not specific to that manufacturer. You can go fish from any of them. And they have, uh, I think, 11 events this year, everything from Arkansas to Lake Champlain in New York. And they're also going to be coming to the Susquehanna River um, in uh, July or August. I can't remember the exact date right now. But all those are good sources. Um, if you want to stick local, start small. I do suggest kayak anglers. Um, the powerful thing about that, I've been with that organization since it's grown um, from its second year. Um, they've donated over $60,000, I think it is now. Is that correct, Chad? That's correct, Russ. Um, $60,000 back to local charities. So we're keeping stuff in our communities. Um, but we've also had Riverside cleanups. Um, they, they do discussion talks. We have... Uh, kids days um and a few other things that that, that keep it very family oriented fun and local um so it's just uh we're stewards of our own environment i guess you would say another question here Lindsay just wanted to know she says kayaking 101 we just recently got kayaks definitely want to try fishing from them what are the key things we need to know to get started uh, i'll just mention to Lindsay that we did go over some of that basic equipment uh, it, earlier in the session if you're t if you're joining in late so you, you're free to go back and, and uh, listen to some of that but um, you know guys if, if you just wanted to mention like hey if I, I just want to I just want to give it a try for my first you know my first weekend or two and see if this is something that I like let me frame the question in in this way what's a good place to go a lake a river either or um, if you don't have any experience, I would say a lake, a smaller lake, like a county lake or, you know, something like that, um, where you can get out, feel comfortable and learn. Um, fishing wise, I mean, you can fish for any species of fish uh, from a kayak. We primarily target bass. Uh, Chad definitely catches the biggest amount of species amongst us all. Um, but uh, I would start local um, at, at a county park. Uh, or county lake and uh just venture out from there um don't do anything outside of your own comfort level um if you're outside of your own comfort level starting it reach out to one of the organizations we just talked about and look for a day that you're having a demo day or see if somebody's in your local area to help you go through kayaking 101. chad fair to say that if you're a seasoned kayaker and you just want to mix in some fishing that'll probably be pretty easy to do but it's almost like walking and chewing gum it's some it's just some people just it's you're now doing two things at once let's just put this scenario out there i'm floating down the river and i'm approaching an area that has some obstacles maybe some rocks or a, a branch or i'm getting uh, close to the shoreline and all of a sudden i get a big fish on and now i'm floating down the river and i've got a fish on that's a good scenario to let someone know that's that's not going to happen if you're just kayaking right so now you've got two things to worry about what do you do in that situation yeah so i mean that's that's why like russ said going to a small smaller body of water you're not going to have moving water to deal with and trying to fight the fish so you know that's that's part of the whole experience and uh there's been plenty of fish lost because there's a lot of newbies out there and just not understanding what a strainer is and some of the uh safety issues that you run into a lot of the fish like to hold either before a set of rapids or or, or after and just how your kayak does going through all that stuff too um it's just something that you want to make sure you're well aware of heading into any of those stretches um 
And it's just, you know, learning how to play that fish and keeping it close to you while floating down through that. Um, you also have to keep in mind whether you have a paddle in your hand and a rod. So, it, you know, there's a lot of things going on. So that it can be dicey, but for the most part, it's part of the fun too. So go ahead, Russ. I, I guess you would say your own personal safety always comes before any of the activity that has you out there. Um, I'm probably one of the biggest guys when it comes to safety um, that I know of. It, there's guys that I will be fishing with because it could be a 90 degree day. I still have my life jacket on. Um, you know, when you think about that stuff, you know, the scenario you put out, um, let's just not even say the life jackets for flotation purposes, but if I were to slip and fall on a river and, you know, hit my chest off a rock, I wear a padded life jacket, uh, your traditional flotation style. Um, that may be something that helps me from getting, you know, injured, um, because it's like wearing a padded vest. Um, so safety is, is, is paramount. Um, I can't, I can't say that more than enough. I mean, I've taken paddling classes just to become a better paddler um, and actually became a sit on top kayak fishing and or fishing instructor, paddling instructor. Um, so safety is always paramount. Um, I can't, I, I try not to put myself in situations where I would say the fish is more important than my personal safety. Chris on Facebook wants to know simply how easy is it to flip a kayak? As easy <laughs> as to wreck a bike. <laughs> um, so uh, generally speaking, kayaks have different labels of stability. Um, Chad's kayak there that's pictured now, that kayak's super stable, but it's also 36 inches wide. It's not the mental picture of a kayak that people think of of whitewater rat or whitewater kayaking long narrow boats that you barely fit in or wide as your waist um, these kayaks are 14 foot long 13 foot long 36 38 inches wide um, they're made for standing um, this new breed of fishing kayaks is not a traditional kayak that you would think of as something that's flippy um, but there also is the the science behind it if your center of balance leaves the center of the boat, the boat's going to find its new center of balance. I'll put, I'll follow up on that. Do you guys ever, as, as, as much experience as you have, when's the last time uh, either of you have accidentally fallen off or decided that it was better for your safety or your equipment just to jump off? So, uh, I swam last year in Lake Erie. <laughs> It was, uh, I think it was early 2015, fishing a tournament up on Prescott Bay in late April. It was a tournament, um, 55 mile an hour gust of a cold front came pull, you know, th blowing through. And I was in the lagoons, which you would think would be nice and calm and there's no issues in there. But um, yeah, I made that one last cast because I thought I could get it in. And next thing I knew, I was... Um, acting like a turtle underneath the kayak and, and swam out around it, got it all to shore, lost a couple rods and things like that and paddled my butt off to get to the truck. And like Russ said, I had plenty of extra clothes and, and all of that. But for several years, I got the turtle world award for, uh, you know, turtling during a tournament. So, and it actually is, it's back there. It's still up on my wall from uh, one of our friends, BP, made it out of a metal, metal looking turtle, so. I got it, so stability and, and safety, it all comes with experience, but anybody can flip a kayak is the point. Yeah, it just depends on the situation. All right, so here's a good question. It has to do with when you're parking. For instance, if a kayak angler pulls up to a parking lot, um, and it's a, like a boat access area that has regular car parking and it also has trailer parking. People want to know, they seem to be, these, these boat access areas seem to get f filled up and some of the power boaters um, don't have a place to park. Is there something you can lend to, uh, you know, 
because I because these two segments of boaters need to everybody needs to get along and everybody there's room enough for the on the water for everyone. So let's talk about like etiquette, I guess, for 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 parking um, and how that how you handle that when you get to an access on a lake on a river. Where do you park your vehicle? Uh, what I guess I'll, I'll tackle it this way. When I have a trailer, I treat myself as a boater. Uh, when I'm just in my truck and it's in the bed of my truck, I treat myself as a normal vehicle. Um, the few extra steps I'm going to take, vice one or the other, um, isn't going to affect my fishing or time on the water. Um, but I also think of I try to park further away from anything in case somebody that comes that may be of uh, a less able body than me or a, of, of an older age than me. I don't want them to struggle. Um, but this is a new emerging thing um, and self entitlement, I guess you would say, is the biggest problem with that. Um, so for me, I try to stay far, farthest away from everybody. Um, but when people see that, they also do the same thing. So it takes a lot of us to change that the first park, parking spot you come to may not be the best parking spot for you. Um, the boat etiquette thing, um, I'm not sure if longtime boaters have seen a surge of people being on the water like kayak anglers and they don't understand that some of these kayaks weigh 150 to 200 pounds when they're fully loaded so it's not just pick your kayak up and carry it to the water we do use boat ramps um and that's why we use you know uh use the pennsylvania regulations to have us use launch fees or registration fees um to have the same abilities they do Yeah, I'll just echo what Russell said. I mean, if it's a busy ramp, you know, we have where most of our kayaks have scupper holes or the bottom side of the kayak, you can put a cart under. So there's a lot of times where we can park away from the ramp, not tie up the ramp and still get our kayaks down to the water. And with the kayaks, if it's on a river, you know, there's plenty of places to drop off as long as it's public access that you're able to drop your kayak in and and transfer your vehicles and, and enjoy the day on the water still without getting in anybody's way so it's like russell said it's a respect thing and it's something that we have to do a better job at both of uh our um people out on the water just um you know realizing that we're both there to enjoy the same thing All right, gentlemen. Well, I, I do want to thank you for your time here as we're, we're rounding things out. We seem to have come to the end of uh, the questions that have been coming in as we've been talking. So uh, a lot of the, a lot of these things were covered. Um, I want to give you both the floor for a minute or two just to have any final thoughts. Uh, I do appreciate you guys spending the better part of an hour here with us this afternoon. Chad, I know this is part of your job. And, and Russell, I know this is your passion, but you've, you've got to get back to work, my friend. So we'll let that happen. So, Russell, I'll give you the floor first. Do you have any final thoughts, um, uh, tips, advice for people looking to get into kayak fishing? Uh, so I, I think first off, I, I want to thank you guys for staying with the curve of things, you know, with the Pennsylvania Fishing Boat as this kayak fishing has become emergent. Um, I definitely see the powers that be are picking up on this isn't going away anytime soon. It's affordable. It's nice. It's putting money back in. We know we're seeing bigger and better boat ramps. We're seeing kayak, you know, handicapped kayak accessibility ramps put in on different places. So I think first and foremost, we understand this isn't a, isn't set in stone. It's growing. And I, I want to thank you guys for, you know, helping us get out on the water and doing it safely and giving us the ability to have access to these places that not a lot of people have access to. Um, but as far as kayak fishing, um, like I said, it, right now it's not opportune for me to take you out, um, but I'm one person that will always try to put somebody in my kayak, take you out, let you understand it before you make any kind of investment. Um, I'm, I'm also friends with a few people that own local shops that can put you in the right budget friendly kayak that, that's best for you. Um, a lot of that is is time on the water, um, and I have a lot of it. Um, I just came back from uh, Georgia for a tournament. Uh, I'll be heading back out in a couple weeks, heading to Tennessee for a tournament. Um, so I, I, ultimately, I want to thank you guys for bringing me on and let me, you know, share my passion. Um, if there's anything I can do for you guys, please let me know. Chad, you've used me in the past. I appreciate it. 
um, paddle on, be safe, have fun. Everything from, you know, uh, access to a farm pond to our mighty three rivers we have right here is all accessible by kayak. So enjoy it. All right, Russell Johnson, thank you so much for joining us. Good luck as you get out there in some tournaments this spring. Appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. All right. Chad, some final thoughts for you, sir? Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, thanks for throwing this together. This whole week of a virtual outdoor show has been great to watch, and I think the public has seen what we can do and, and just the whole sport of kayak fishing, the growth, and, and what it's here to do. Um, there are plans to do some virtual intro to kayak fishing programs through the Fish and Boat Commission that we're hoping to put on later in April. So stay tuned for that. Um, check out our website, fishingboat.com, for more information. And then if we're ever able to do in-person programming again, we're probably going to do some hybridized programs. And uh, we'll hopefully go across the state and do some intro to kayak fishing programs throughout the state. So there's plenty of options uh, with the Fish and Boat Commission to get some programming done here in the next you know, six months, eight months. And then like Russ said, you know, the, the local kayak angling groups are, are there to help and, um, you know, just uh, jump on their websites and look up Facebook. There's a lot of different um, social media for those type of uh, events out there and just uh, get that information and get that education and we'll see you on the water. And if you need any advice for catching channel catfish while you're trying to catch bass, just uh, check in with Chad Foster. Mm -hmm. All right, it's good. <laughs> I appreciate it, guys. Thank you both for your time. I want to thank Chad Foster. I want to thank Russell Johnson for being part of the virtual session with us today. I also want to thank our producers, Andy Desco, as well as Dee Fisher behind the scenes. Remember, you can find answers to many of your frequently asked fishing and boating related questions simply by visiting our website, fishandboat.com. If you enjoyed this presentation on Facebook, YouTube, or wherever you found us today, please like and share it, spread the word, help others know about our virtual outdoor expo and all the different topics that we've covered throughout the week. Our next session will happen tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. where we'll present Let's Talk Muskies, featuring some of the PFBC's top muskellunge experts from our bureaus of fisheries and hatcheries. Really looking forward to that one. So for the rest of the gang here today, I want to say thank you for tuning in and we'll see you tomorrow. You guys. Take care, everybody.